Hello everyone, it's Dawn here again from Dawn's Inspirations. I'm going to share with you now page style two of some interactive pages that we can add to our six by six mini admin an hour. So this is page style two. For this you're going to need a sheet of um, 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm using the same cardstock all the way through and we'll probably use the little piece that we had left from page style one as well and we're going to need five sheets of six by six pattern papers. So I've taken the six by, um, five sheets of the six by six pattern papers out of my pad again. So I've already selected my paper ready. So we can go ahead and make a start on this page. So we're going to start off by cutting the paper 12 inches by six inches. So we'll go ahead and trim off that first piece. Line up in the paper trimmer, and then we'll score this first piece that we've got at three inches and at nine inches on the 12 inch side. So I'm going to go ahead and score this so it's three inches and again at nine inches. I'm using the flat side of my scoring tool again, I'm flipping over. And as a lot of you know, I like to double score. This just helps break down the fibres in your paper and helps your paper not to crack when we go ahead and fold it. So they're the two score lines for that page. So I'm going to pop that to one side, bring my mat back up, and then we're going to cut from the piece that we've got left here. This was the piece that the other piece of paper that we hadn't used. I now need to cut a strip that's five and a half by six. So I'm just lining that up in my trimmer. So that's five and a half by six. And then this other piece here, I'm going to trim to five and a half by five and a half. So be at the five and a half. Let's just check. That's already there. So that's going to be one of our photo mat tags that goes inside. So we're going to pop that to one side for the moment. So we've got the two pieces here. Now you've got the piece that we've scored. So we're now going to go ahead and actually score the fold lines on that. Okay, so we're going to fold this one. We're going to fold it in this way. Doesn't matter which way you fold, the cardstock I'm using here today is the coordinations. So it's got a texture one side and plane the other. And then this one is going to fold over on itself. So I'm just going to fold that over like that. And then this piece we are going to attach to the front of here. Okay, so that's how that's going to go. So we're going to make two pockets on this page. So I've got some really thin red line um, tape here that I'm going to use today. Purely, I'm using the really thin one here. It's got all tangled up. The reason I'm using the really thin one here today is this allows me a bit more room to add a photo mat to my pocket. And also I'm using the red line tape here because I'm using the really thin and this is the cardstock and it's going to get a lot of um, wear, um, that's why I'm using this red tape because it is a bit more sticky than the normal double sided tape. So if you go along, on this first flap you've got, run your red line really thin tape just along the bottom. that off. The unfortunate thing about the red line tape is you can't tear it with your fingers. So it does tend to mess your scissors up. I do try and keep one pair of scissors purely for cutting this tape. I find that does work a lot better. I only gunge up one pair of scissors then so two. And then I'm going to run a strip along the bottom here as well. Okay. That's run on three sides. Okay, so I'm just going to burnish that down and then we can 
take that off and attach our front piece of our paper. It's coming off quite easily today. Often it sticks everywhere and can't get it off. Just make sure I've got it round the right way. Now you need to butt this corner up as close as you can to that corner. I'm going to use my score pal to help me. She says, get it up in the corner. Take your time to line it up because it is ultra sticky. I'm going to turn it around, I think, so I can see a bit more what I'm doing. Just line that up there. Like that there, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yes, I'm happy with that. So then I'm going to burnish just to get a good stick on that. So you just burnish where you've actually stuck the tape. This does help embed the tape into the paper so you get a firm stick on that. So just stick all that down. Okay, and then that's created a pocket on this side. Okay, and then we're going to make another pocket on this side, but this time we only need to put thin tape on the two sides. So let me just bring this tape round to here. So let's put some tape on there. That's one lot. Oh, not wanting to cut off, that's not gone very well. That's it. And another piece on here as well. So we'll stick that down on there as well. And I'm going to give that a little burnish before we fold that over. Stick that down. Use my craft knife just to take the backing off the tape here. And then uh, we can then tuck any ends in you've got and just fold that flat back on itself. Okay, and then we can burnish that down, and then that creates a second pocket. So you've got a nice page there with two pockets. I'm going to run a decorative edge along this side here, like we did on the first page, just to give a bit more interest to the book. So I'm going to use the same punch that I've used, so it keeps it nice and uniformed throughout the book. So if you haven't got a punch, don't worry. Um, as I said, you can go ahead and use decorative scissors. You could just leave it as it is. You don't have to use a punch at all. Um, you could just round the corners. So if you've got some spellbinder dies and you wanted to tuck a spellbinder die in to make a decorative edge, that works just as well as also. Another thing, if you haven't got any of these fancy tools, is just get... Um, any papers that you've got that have got a nice edge on them or you think well that's a nice shape you could free hand draw a pattern or even a half moon so you know just have a look and see what you've got around you um, you know you might have some papers or something or some packaging you picked up with a nice edge on it you can use that as well so you know don't be frightened of using these things so that's the punch there I'm just gonna move my mess out of the way and then we can go ahead and start decorating our page. That's our page. This is the part that's going to stick inside and I'll show you how to do that at the end when we've done all our um, decorative pages. So I need a mat on the front here. So for the mat on the front, I think I'm going to use this one. Okay, so I don't want to go right up to my decorative um, edge here. So this one, I think we're going to measure in, just let me see a scalloped edge. Let's try five inches by five and three quarters. So I'm going to bring, I'll take that top piece off actually. So five and three quarters high. I'm doing it this way so I get a nice little bit of the cardstock showing through. Um, I think that looks quite nice when you've got a border with the cardstock showing through and then with the hinges of the book, as I say, you've got that follow on, um, it all sort of matches in the same, which is quite nice. i do this one, I said at five, didn't I? So we'll have a look at it at five. We can always trim a bit more off, but we can not add it back on. So 
let's have a look and see what that looks like I'm quite liking that and I might keep that um, much round those edges and keep that edge straight so I'm liking that at this stage if you wanted to go ahead and ink your paper you may not a problem at all your personal choice and I think at this stage and no, I'm not going to add my magnet there I'm going to add my magnet underneath I'm going to put a magnet again on this closure just to keep it so it's not flapping about when it's inside our book so I'm going to use my tape runner you can use any glue you like for this your double sided tape, wet glue I'm just using a tape runner here for quickness today I have got loads of glue as you know I do like my colour of glue but I have um, I've got the tape runner that I'm using here today for this so I'm just lining that up so that's the front page now on the inside here I'm going to be a bit clever with my paper because uh, I think we can just be a bit um, bit frugal here if you like now these two pockets both measure slightly differently and um, this one I'm going to do at two and three quarters and this one is going to be that's going to be two and three quarters as well so they're going to be two and three quarters um, along so I think I'm going to use my sparkly paper so that needs to be five and three quarters high so I'm going to trim the top off that to five and three quarters and then I need to measure two strips at two and three quarters and this means we can get two top pockets out of the one piece of paper and it also keeps it nice and uniformed through the, um, the layout as well so trim those off so these are going to get attached onto there okay and then I'm going to do the same with these inside pockets now I've measured one at three and a half because I'm going to tuck it underneath and one at two and three quarters so the first thing I need to do is I think I'm going to put my lines I think we'll have the lines going this way so the first thing I need to do is to, to cut the height down to five and three quarters so it all ties in and then I need to do one at three and a half in there and then this one will go inside here now, as you can see they're a bit longer but they're going to tuck inside so let me just move these ones out of the way for now. now I'm hoping with the thin tape that it might fit but it's not going to quite so I need to take a bit more of the height but that's not a problem take another quarter of an inch off that and see what that fits like Yes, that can fit off there and then that pokes out and that gives a backing to the um, pattern pa um, to the pocket there. I'm putting a photo mat in there with pattern paper so if you wanted to be really frugal because you're using a nice coloured um, cardstock behind you, I haven't got to put anything at all really but I have anyway. So I'm just going to round my edges off on these. On this project I'm not inking any of my edges which is not like me I normally like to ink all my edges but um, I feel it's got quite a fresh look and I'm just showing you really for demonstration purposes putting the whole page together so that's going to slide in there so in the end we have the height of that at five and a half so if you wanted to know a few measurements that's five and a half so I'm going to put some on here wet glue might have been a bit better because then that would give me a bit of wiggle room to slide about but um, I've stuck the tape down so we'll just run with it and go in so just try and line it up as I can nice and level yeah happy with that stick that down put some tape on the back of this one here as well Six by six now has been so uh, popular that I thought by adding these little interactive pages, I haven't gone too um, mad with them. I could do, but I've got a lot of new crafters 
and a lot of um, non-crafters that now craft with me and I didn't want to put them off and that's why I'm trying to keep these interactive pages quite simple um, so anybody can have a go at doing them really. I'm just going to trim this other piece down to five and a half so it'll fit inside the pocket. So let's check that fits inside there. Yeah, that fits inside there fine. I think I'm going to have the pink on the top again the same. So that will fit inside there. But what I'm going to do before I fit that down, I'm going to put a magnet on there and I should have put my magnet underneath there. So what I'm going to do is pull this up quickly because I have to put my magnet on. So that was lucky, I didn't do my magnet. So let me bring some magnets in. This is where we have right fun and games with my magnets. Just keeps the pages nice and flat when you're uh, having them laying in your book. So that's just, uh, and it's taking your crafting as well to another level. So I'm just putting a piece of double sided tape down there first. I'm going to take that off. And then I'm going to get one of my magnets. These are tiny little magnets. You can get these anywhere, as I said in the original video. Um, I picked these up off Amazon. Uh, Basic Grey do some. Um, you know, lots of craft shops do them. So I'm just sticking that roughly in the middle. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You won't see it, so it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to put a bit more tape on this so I can stick this back down. And then I'll show you how we then attach the other piece on. So I'm going to stick that back down again. So even I make mistakes and I get ahead of myself and get excited about layering things up. And push that down. So you can't see the magnet now and you've got no bumping or anything on that so you don't even know the magnet's there. And then what we have to do then is to get the second magnet, put it on here to find the first one. See every time you move it away, you go a bit closer, it's flipped over. Oh, it'll find it, see? So that's how strong these magnets are. So I'm going to try and put a little piece of tape on the back here. Just a little bit of sticky, not too much. Put that back down the right way. Yeah, that's where it needs to be. And then so I've put a little bit of tape just on the back of it. Laying it down. Holding it onto there. And hopefully when I open it up, the magnet is then on the other side and then just to hold that in place I'm going to pop a bit of double sided tape over it because I don't want that moving about while I slide in um, the pocket in liner so I'm just going to round the corners of my pocket liner you can get that stuck in because that's going to go on top of there does fit so I'll put some double sided tape on here Inside there, and just line it all up so I like where it looks. Yes, that'll do. Burnish all that down around the, the, where the magnet is. I'm now going to round the edges off on the top part of the pocket so it matches up with the other one. I haven't cut very well, I need to empty my corner trimmer. That's going to go on top of there. So out of the two pockets, all we've used is two sheets of paper by being a little bit frugal. And it also it's quite nice because it's matching them up as a uniform to look with the page. It looks a bit striped. I'm not quite happy that that's straight. Okay. So now we can go ahead and make our photo mats to go inside there got the one piece that we had left here this was measuring five and a half by five and a half so this now needs to come down because it's not going to quite fit in there it's going to be too snug for my liking so I'm going to trim this down to five let's just trim that one down 
make your mats any size you wish. You could put nice decorative edges on them. You could make them as little tags. I haven't got to be big mats. I'm making big photo mats because I think it's quite nice um, to put large photographs on. So I'm happy with that. So that's five inches by down five and a half. So I'm just going to round this off with my corner rounder. Now, as I said, the paper I'm using here today is coordination. So I've got a texture one side and plain the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my texture side plain for putting photos on and just stick patterned paper on this side of my um, photo mats. So as I've got the lines going this way, I've got a nice piece of embossed um, paper here. And I'm going to have the lines going that way. So I need to measure just underneath again. So I need to go five and a quarter by four and three quarters. So five and a quarter. And then I'll round the edges off again and then they can then fit in four and three quarters I said in time. There we go. So then that can fit on there with the edges cornered. So let's corner those edges off and we can get that stuck down. As I said, you can make tags for this. I'm making nice big photo mats so you can cut down your six by four photos because I like to get as much or as many photos as possible in the albums and try and keep it as simple as possible. So uh, that's what we'll do here today. That's the first one. So that will go nicely inside there and give a bit more interest. You've got lots of patterns and stuff going on there. Now if you remember from page one, we had a spare piece of paper page style page one I said don't throw it away this is where we can use it to make another photo mat so I think again this needs to be down to five so I measure that down to five inches and then I might make this one a bit smaller again so that's five inches I'm sure that is the right, right way around for you yes that's five inches and then obviously I don't want it sticking out too far. So I'm probably thinking, what's that measurement there where my thumb is? We'll do it at four and a quarter. Let's see what four and a quarter comes out like. Still a good size for a photo mat. And that's the main thing. Move that bit out of the way. So yes, I'm happy with that. And that also shows the paper around the edge and more interest so I'll round off my corners for that oh putting the tape on the wrong side I've got to cut my paper first that's a bit silly am I getting such a hurt myself right let's measure this then so that's I'm going to need four my photo mat then or my pattern mat needs to be Four inches by, oh, I've forgotten again already. Four inches by four and three quarters. So, we're going to go that way. Four inches by four and three quarters. on there okay yep so around those edges off as I say I'm only sticking um, pattern paper to one side of my large photo match you can stick paper two sides if you wish but I think it's nice to have the green showing I'm being a bit more frugal as well with that bit of the double sided tape there which I don't want so I'll rub that away. It's the beauty of these tape runners and the glue that I use that if you get a mistake you can just rub it off as long as it's still wet that's fine. That's it. So that one will stick inside there and then that flips over and that's page style two. So page style two you've got a big space there for photos got the magnetic opening so you've got a photo map that you can put photos each side you could even put a photo on the back 
You've got space there for a photo where you could put a journaling block if you wanted to. Space inside here as well for photographs and on the back there. And that's style, page style two of the interactive book to go in our six by six mini admin an hour. I haven't done anything to the back and after we've done all these interactive pages I'll do a video at the end to show you how to attach them all into your book. So I'm Dawn from Dawn's Inspirations. If you click on to the link on the video now, that will take you to page style three if you want to join me for page style three. Bye bye for now.